Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Piathlon. In today's video, I will be showing you how you can use a Raspberry Pi Pico to light up an external LED and make it blink. We'll be using Thani and MicroPython, so if you don't have those installed, then check out our previous video. And after that, you can check out our video on how to light up the onboard LED on the Raspberry Pi Pico. But for now, let's dive right in by showing you what you need in this video. Of course, you'll start by needing a Raspberry Pi Pico with soldered headers. Lastly, you'll need a solderless breadboard. You'll need a 330 ohm resistor. You'll need a simple external LED. Any color will work, but I'm using red in this one. You'll also need a micro USB to connect your Raspberry Pi Pico to your laptop. And you'll need two male to male jumper wires. The first thing you'll want to do is position your Raspberry Pi Pico on the top of your breadboard. I have the top left of my Pico in C1, and the top right is an H1. Next, you'll want to install your resistor. You'll have one end of your resistor going into A20, and the other end will go into A24. Your Raspberry Pi. The last pin should be in row 20, and you want to make sure your resistor is lined up with the tail end of your Raspberry Pi. Now here we have our LED. You can see that one leg is longer than the other. The longer one is known as the anode, which is the positive side, and the shorter end is known as the cathode, which is the negative side. This is going to matter when we hook it up to our breadboard next. You'll want to take the longer end of your LED, the anode, and stick it into the same row as one of the ends of your resistor. So that's E24 on my breadboard. And then you want to cross the center gap and stick the shorter end onto the opposite side on the same row, which on my breadboard is F24. Next, take one of your jumper wires and you're going to connect one end to the same row as the shorter end of your LED and connect the other end to the negative side of your breadboard's power rail. If you don't know what that is, you can look at the front of your breadboard and you'll see that negative sign. That's the column you want to connect to. And then take your second jumper wire and in the first row of that power rail, you want to connect one end of your jumper wire, then connect the other end to J3. All right, so I'm going to go to another angle and show you what our completed circuit looks like. We have a Raspberry Pi Pico, and then we have our resistor, which connects to the LED. And then we have the jumper wires, which complete our circuit. And now we're going to hook this up to our computer, and we're going to go into Thani and develop our script and run it to make the LED blink. If you haven't seen our previous video where we talk about how you can light up the onboard LED of your Raspberry Pi Pico, you should check that out before moving on to the external LED. But let's dive right into the code. First, we need to import the machine library, which will allow us to communicate with the GPIO pins on our Raspberry Pi Pico. We also need to import uTime. That's how we're going to control the how long each blink lasts on our Raspberry Pi. And we want the loop that's always going to run. So it can just cycle back and forth until we click the stop button in our development environment or unplug the Raspberry Pi Pico. So we'll just say while wow, true to create an infinite loop that will continually run. But actually I'm getting ahead of myself because we also need to define a variable that will reference the GPIO pin of which our LED is stored. So I'll set that equal to LED external equal to machine, which is referring to our machine library that pen because we're referring to a pen 15 and machine that pen that out which is just letting uh, Thani and MicroPython know we're going to be sending output to pen 15. Now you may be confused right now wondering why we're sending output to pen 15 when our LED is actually in row 24 of our, of our breadboard and the reason why we're doing that is because the GPIO pens 
on your Raspberry Pi Pico, the numbering may not line up with how you actually refer to it in your code. So we're going to refer to pin 15, and this will work with the way we have our breadboard and our Raspberry Pi set up. So let's go back inside our loop, and we'll use that LED external variable, and we'll use the toggle function. If you remember in our last video, we didn't use the toggle function. We mainly set the value of the LED. But toggle essentially does the same thing in fewer lines of code. If your, if your light is on, toggle will turn it off. If it's off, toggle will turn it on. So we'll change the state of our light. And then we'll use uTime to sleep for two seconds which will just pause so you can see it light up and then turn off for two seconds and then light on for two seconds and so on and so forth. So go ahead and save this to your Raspberry Pi Pico and then click run and you should see your Raspberry Pi Pico lighting up and if it's not we can do a little bit of troubleshooting now. All right this should be the finished product. If yours is not lighting up then there are several things you can check. You can rewind this video and make sure you plugged everything into the right spot and make sure your circuit looks like this. You can also make sure you're pressing everything into the breadboard where it's firm enough. As you can see, these don't really move around even when I move the breadboard because everything is fairly secure. And so if everything is flopping around your breadboard or if it's not deep enough inside of your breadboard, you might not be able to get a good connection. Lastly, if you have any errors in your code, you'll want to compare your code to mine and make sure you typed everything properly. We have a lot of Raspberry Pi content on our channel and a lot more coming in the future. And we also have a lot of Python programming tutorials and more of those coming in the future also. So please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.